Welcome. In this how-to, you will learn how to create this enclosure. We'll begin with a regular five-sided box. We'll be creating the baffle for an 8-inch woofer. First, we'll cut the mounting disc using a router and a circle jig. You can also use a jigsaw. When the disc has been cut, set the bit to cut approximately 5 8 We'll pre-cut most of the mounting hole to make it easier to cut out later. You will understand this better in later steps. We'll also cut another ring to recess mount the woofer. However, this step is optional. If you decide to go with a recess mount, apply enough wood glue around the mounting disc to bond them together. You can also use super glue. To secure the ring while the glue dries, I recommend shooting four brad nails around the edges. Next, we'll round off the edges with a roundover bit. Turn on the router and begin rounding the edges. Don't worry about the brad nails, the bit will easily cut through them. Now the edges have a smooth look. Now we'll create a groove on the edge of the box where we can staple the fleece. We set the bit to remove 3 8 off the edges to give us the necessary space for the staples. Now cut a piece of 2x4 that is slightly higher than the box and place it in the center. Make sure the ring is even on all sides before moving to the next step. Once satisfied with the look, attach the 2x4 to the bottom of the box using two wood screws. Attach the disc to the 2x4 using a single wood screw. We'll be using polyester fleece for the wrapping. Cut the necessary length and lay it over the enclosure. Begin by spraying adhesive on one side and pressing the fleece onto it. It should attach easily. Repeat this step for the other sides. To eliminate wrinkles and sags, simply stretch the fleece and press it onto the glue. Repeat this process throughout the box. Keep in mind that stretching the fleece too hard can move the disc out of place. Only stretch enough to remove the sags and wrinkles. Now staple the fleece to the rabbited edge. Repeat the step for all three sides. Now take a razor and cut away the excess fleece. Now put on your fume mask and gloves and pour the fiberglass resin. Add the required MEKP hardener according to the container and mix it thoroughly. Now brush the resin onto the fleece with a chip brush. Remember, don't brush too hard or you'll create sags. Keep brushing lightly until the fleece is completely soaked. Be sure to completely cover the staple areas and the ring area. Don't brush when brushing resin. You have plenty of time to work with it before it dries. Once you have finished brushing the resin, set the enclosure in the sun to dry. When the resin has cured, cut away the fleece with a razor. Cut away the excess material using a die grinder and a trim bit. You can also use a Dremel or an air saw. Now remove the center screw and turn the box over to remove the two screws that were used to hold the 2x4. We'll remove the back piece of the enclosure as well. Take out the 2x4. Now we can stiffen the enclosure from the inside to reduce finished work on the outside. We'll use two layers of fiberglass mat. 
Apply the mat directly onto the fleece with a slight overlap on the wood for strength. Once complete, it should look similar to this. Apply the resin with the tip of the brush and then carefully brush the mat onto the wood. This is a necessary step to reinforce the enclosure. Set the enclosure in the sun when finished. When the mat has dried, we'll use liquid nails to seal the edges to avoid any air leaks. Apply adhesive on the edges and place the back piece in place and secure it using brad nails or screws. We'll sand the baffle using 80 grit. We need to remove the residue left from the resin. You can also use a pneumatic angle die grinder to speed up the process. When the sanding is complete, begin mixing the body filler. Keep mixing until it becomes one solid color, then apply it throughout the box. Be sure to completely cover the baffle. Now let it cure for a few minutes. Now take an angle die grinder and begin sanding the body filler. I'm using 80 grit for this step. Hand sanding is also an option, but your fingertips will be stressed in this step. Pneumatic or power tools are the fastest way to bring down high spots. If you decide to sand by hand, make sure to use 60 grit or lower to speed the sanding process. Keep in mind that sanding too much will create low spots. Hand sand the ring for better results on the rounded edges. Now it's ready for primer. Now begin spraying the primer. Remember, spray the primer at a close distance to properly fill in the scratches and pinholes. Always use smooth passes when spraying primer. It's completely normal if the primer begins to run. Any runs can be sanded down once the primer has dried. For best results, I always recommend the High Build 2K primer. Let the primer dry for a few hours. We'll sand the primer using 80, 220, and 400 grit for a smooth finish. I'm using a DA sander, but I recommend hand sanding where necessary. The final step before paint is to cut out the mounting hole that was pre-cut in the beginning. Now clean the surface using a tack cloth and paint prep. Now mix and pour the paint. Always use strainers. Begin spraying the paint using smooth passes. Don't spray too slow or the paint will run. Let the paint flash between coats and often inspect the surface for any spots that you might have missed. Always be patient when spraying paint. Remember, you have plenty of time to work with it. Now let the paint cure for several minutes before adding clear coat. Now carefully begin spraying the clear coat. Be sure to use smooth passes to avoid runs as well. Add three coats for maximum shine. When you finish, add carpet and speaker terminals to complete the enclosure. 